Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players and featuring William Redfield. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the men of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled Operation Wingtip. This is a true story of Captain Jack Miller, United States Air Force, who with Captain John Palladino and Lieutenant Wood MacArthur executed an almost unbelievable maneuver in the war-torn sky over Korea, a story that hit the front pages of every newspaper in the country just a few months ago. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. Here's an important message for you young men with two or more years of college. You are urgently needed in your rapidly expanding United States Air Force. The Air Force needs men today to be the leaders of tomorrow, men who will follow in the tradition of the Air Force and its great leaders. If you're between 19, yes, 19, and 26 and a half years of age and can qualify, you are urged to join the ranks of modern air pioneers by becoming an aviation cadet. Stop in at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Or write to Aviation Cadet Branch, Headquarters, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Somewhere over Europe during World War II, a group of Air Force planes are winging through the sky. Captain Jack Miller, second in command and flying as wingman to the group leader, is listening on his ear. Approximately 15 minutes from primary target area. Should begin bomb run at 0947 hours. We'll confirm. Titan formation. Repeat. Titan formation. How's this, Chief? Tight enough? Wow, hold it, Miller. Let's leave a little room for turbulence. We'll start bomb run at 0947. Follow according to plan under individual control. Roger and out. Hey, Joe. Yeah, boss? Switch me over to intercom, will you? Check. Pilot to bombardier. Pilot to bombardier. Bombardier to pilot. Go ahead. Right. We'll start bomb run at 0947. Heading 15 east southeast. Altitude 8500. Indicated 285. Confirm. Over. Roger. I have it. Continue heading. We'll correct if necessary. Bombardier to pilot. We'll open bomb base. Roger. Bomb base open. Steady on target. Five, four... Three, two, one. Bombs away. Well, Joe, I guess that does it. Let's head for home. Hey, wait a minute. Look at the major ship. What's that hanging hey, from the... Hey, yeah, it's a bomb. 
It's stuck there on that door. Quick, switch over to radio. Hand me that mic. Wing to leader. Wing to leader. Come in, Major. Right, Miller. Go ahead. Major, you got a bomb hung up on your bomb bay door. Keep your doors open. I'll nudge it a little. Are you kidding? With what? My wingtip. No, thanks. What do you want to do? Carry the bomb back to the base? I don't know. What if it explodes? Don't know about that either. Better let me nudge it a little. Might come loose. All right. But wait till I look the other way, will you? I don't want to watch this. Couldn't see it from this angle if you tried. All you do is keep level. I want to try something. Trying to kick the bomb loose with my left wing tip. I can't quite reach it. Stay where you are. I'm going to try the other side. Why? Will that be any better? I just remembered. I'm right-handed. Missed again. Hey, I got it. There she goes. Hit the highway. Thank you, Captain Miller. Oh, think nothing of it, Major. You want me to dust off your rudder while I'm up here? No, thanks. Just move your wingtips away a few inches, will you? Roger. That's more like it. Miller, now you've got something to tell those kids back in your hometown when this thing is all over. Oh, yeah. They won't believe it. So I dived down under the Major's plane and came up on the other side, you see, and I... I nudged the bomb loose with my right wing tip, and it dropped and just exploded on the highway. Boom. And that was it. Aw, oh, come on, Jack. Hey, kids, come on over here. Captain Miller is telling them again. Oh, now, look, Andy, it's the truth. It happened. I was there. Yeah. Now, tell us what happens when one of the new jets is broken through the speed of sound. That's the one I like. Well, now, like I told you, Andy, you're diving, see? Now, let's say in a Republic F-84 jet. Yeah. So you're going pretty near straight down, see? Faster and faster. All of a sudden, your ship does a pitch-up. Yeah, but why do they call it that? Well, because the plane kind of, you see, noses up. He pitches up, starts to climb. Did you ever do it? Uh, oh, yeah. Fun? Well, yes and no. It's kind of exciting, but it's also kind of dangerous. Aw, oh, but you were conscious all the time. Well, I certainly was, Andy, or I wouldn't be here. Tell me something, Jack. Yeah? If you got such a kick out of being in the Air Force, why don't you go back in? Andy, that's just what I'm doing. You are? Yep. Getting kind of tired of making fences and gates. I'm rejoining next month. You are? Where do you think they'll send you? Williams Air Force Base. Out in Arizona. Come in. Hi, fella. Oh, hi. We're just a couple of neighbors extending a welcome to Mesquite Manor, the pride of Williams Air Force Base. Oh. I'm Captain John Palladino, and this here is Lieutenant Wood MacArthur. Well, hello. Oh, hi. Well, glad to meet you. I'm Captain Miller, Jack. Thanks for the welcome. It's okay. Oh, we just got here this morning ourselves. 
Johnny and I met on the train coming out. Oh, yeah? Well, where are you from? I've been making fences back in Oklahoma. Oh, well, Johnny and his brother ran a restaurant in North Little Rock, Arkansas. I was in real estate. Oh, I see. Well, sure feels good to get the old uniform back on, doesn't it? Sure does. Especially when it means that we're here to fly those jet jumps. <laughs> Johnny's sure hepped up about flying these oil cans. Well, hey now, so am I. I can't hardly wait till I get one of those babies rolling down the runway. Yeah. We've got an awful lot of transition school to get through first. Those jets take an awful lot of money. The operation of use of jets has disproved the early belief that they were not well adapted to formation flight. You can fly even tighter with them. Of course, you haven't got any big propeller out there chewing the air. Now, the new I, you gentlemen, will be flying faster than a speed of sound, which is Mach 1. Now, let me explain that. The speed of sound varies with temperature from 760 and 5 tenths miles per hour at 59 degrees Fahrenheit to 661 and 6 tenths miles an hour in the thin, cold air above 35,000 feet. Why, incidentally, if you ever get up that high, 35,000, don't try to bail out. Custom here at Williams Air Force Base. Should one of you become a desert boy, a dope who undershoots the runway, it'll cost you money. Because you have to stand treat for the whole flight at the club. That's the custom. Here's a fact. You'll also answer by endorsement. This is done to help you remember the incident. Because where you guys are going, the runways aren't very long. You'll have to learn to hit them. Okay, that's all, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Class dismissed. I guess you guys know what he meant when he gave her that phrase, where you guys are going, the runways aren't very long. Sure do. Where else? Korea. Next, flight F, Fox. Flight leader, Captain John Palladino. Here, sir. Fox 2, Lieutenant Wood MacArthur. Present, sir. Fox 3, Captain Jack Miller. Right, Colonel. Now the mission. You've uh, drawn your maps? Yes, sir. Right, right, sir. Primary target, railroad yards at this point. Secondary target, troop concentration located at this point. Everybody got it? Check, Colonel. Okay. Guess it's happy hunting and be seeing you, fellas. By the time you get your ships checked out, it'll be time for takeoff. That'll be all. Well, John, Woody, suppose I better get that flying blowtorch warmed up. Right. I'll check back with both of you just before takeoff. Give a listen, huh? Okay. Well, let's get them cooking. Cap Miller, the old oil can's ready to roll. Oh, good, Sergeant. How about that oxygen line? Did you give it a check? Right, sir. I don't want you cocking up out there at 30,000 feet. <laughs> Good boy. Well, let's light her up. All clear. All clear. Ready for takeoff, Miller? Roger, Johnny. Okay, Woody. Right. Over. Let's roll them out. Box two, box three. This is Fox Leader. Do you read me? Roger. Roger. A few bandits upstairs. Think they'll cause us any trouble? I don't think so, Johnny. They don't look anxious. Okay. We're on target anyway, so let's drop them and get back. Bombs away. Okay, let's go. Go 
hope the Colonel's satisfied. It should be. Okay. Let's climb it to 32,000. See if those bandits still feel playful. Listening to the proudly we hail production of Operation Wingtip. We'll return to our story in just a moment after this important announcement. Here's good news for you young men with two or more years of college. The age requirement for aviation cadet training has been lowered to 19. Yes, if you're between 19 and 26 and a half years of age and can qualify, you'll receive your silver wings and your commission as a second lieutenant in the expanding Air Force. There's a vitally important job for you as a pilot, navigator, bombardier, radar observer, flight engineer, or electronics officer, and there's golden opportunity in this jet age of air power. For full information, visit your United States Army and your United States Air Force recruiting station, or write direct to Aviation Cadet Branch, Headquarters, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. Now we present the second act of Operation Wingtip. Box two. Box three. This is box leader. No bandits available, but there's another flight of F-84s on their way home ahead of us. Let's get out of the way. Follow me. Roger. Roger. Fox 2. This is Fox 3. Isn't Johnny diving a little fast? What do you mean, diving? Now he's climbing. What's the matter with him? Fox leader. This is Fox 3. What you doing? Over. He's diving again. What's the matter with him? Think he's all right? Fox leader, this is Fox 2. Are you all right, Johnny? Yeah. Sure, sure. I, I, I'm okay. Well, cut out the acrobatics then, will you? Now he's climbing again. I'd call that a pitch-up. Fox 3, this is Fox 2. Yeah, Woody. I'm going to catch up with Johnny. He's leveling off now. You better pull up on the other side of him. I think something's wrong. Can you see him from that side? Uh-uh. Can you see him from your side? Yeah. Looks like he's grabbing at his oxygen mask. Throttle back, Johnny. Throttle back. Fox leader, this is Fox 2. Throttle back. See him now? Yeah, he's going too fast, Woody. He's doing better than 500 again. Throttle back, Johnny. Throttle back. Fox leader, this is Fox 2. Throttle back. Throttle back. I don't think he can hear us, Woody. Throttle back, Johnny! Maybe he heard you that time, Jack. Slow down a little. Can you see him now? I've got a bad angle here. Yeah, yeah, I can see him. Looks like his head's resting against the canopy. What? Hey, something happened. Now he slumped forward. Fox leader, this is Fox 3. Are you all right? Johnny, are you all right? Woody, I think he passed out. Something's wrong, Woody. Yeah? Pull up in front of him. Give him a blast from your tail. Maybe it'll shake him awake. Roger.
No good. Try it again. Do any good? No. Okay, I'll try it again. No, no, cut it, cut it, Woody, cut it. No, that's enough. What's the matter? I'm afraid you'll send him into a spin. Okay. Anything else we can try? Well, I... Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look. Hey, put your wingtip under his wing. And I'll put mine under his other wing. And we'll keep him level till he comes to. What? Now, you heard me. Well, sure, sure, I heard you. What's the matter, you crazy? We'll all go down in a heap. No, we won't. I tried it once. I just remembered. Hey, grab him, Woody. He's falling your way. Roger. Got him. Wait a minute. I'll get a little closer. Hey. Hey, what goes? I can't touch him. Air cushion between your wing and his. It's the turbulence around the wings, Woody. Now, you see, just, just play around with it. That's right. You'll get the feel of it. Now, now, take it easy, Woody. Easy. You're bouncing him too hard. That's too much. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. Starting to roll over. Now, it's your turn. Catch him, boy. I got him. Uh, what a game this is. Now, what do we do? Carry him like this? Till he comes to? What if he doesn't come to? I don't know. Ask me again in about 15 minutes. If I'm still here, that's a promise. No, oh, I'm sorry. I guess I pushed too hard. Grab him, Woody. Got him. Take it easy, though, will you? Look, Miller. This being 30,000 feet up in the air. It's not good for Johnny to be up here without oxygen, is it? No. Nope. Well, then, let's drop him down to about 15,000. Maybe the fresh air will bring him to. Can't do it, Woody. Why not? We haven't crossed the front lines yet. We're still over enemy territory. If we go down now... Oh, I get it. Come at aircraft, huh? Yep. So, we just stay up here at 30,000 and play ping pong with a conked out pilot. Yep. How long? 100 miles. Maybe 15 minutes. Think we can hold out? I guess so. Think Johnny can hold out without oxygen? I don't know. May catch him, Woody. He's starting to roll over. Down to 15,000 feet, Woody. Can you see him from there? Yeah. He's still out. Uh huh. Fox leader. This is Fox 3. Wake up, Johnny. Come on, Johnny. Wake up. Uh, no. No go. Hey, Woody, let's try it together. Soft at first and then build it up. Maybe that'll get through. Roger. Johnny, Johnny wake, wake up. up. Johnny, wake up. Johnny, wake up. Johnny. Fox leader, this is Fox 3. Fox leader, this is Fox 3. Keep after him, Jack. He's trying to come to. Listen, Johnny. Johnny, can you hear me? Uh, uh, uh. Listen, Johnny. Switch your oxygen output to 100%. Your oxygen output. 
It's on the right panel, Johnny. On the right panel. Oxygen. 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 He's doing it, Miller. Oh, man. It's about time. Hey, Johnny. We're at 13,000. We're ready to land anytime you are. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Better land right away. Oh, man, I got a headache. You got a headache? <laughs> Aladino, you look awful. Your face is purple. Well, it was... It was green for a while, sir. <laughs> After I came to and found out what these two characters had done for me... I should imagine it would be. Most amazing operation I've ever heard. We followed the whole thing on control tower radio. We never thought you'd make it in. Amazing exhibition of nerve and skill. Yes, sir. Yours truly... Well, I sure appreciate Miller's early training in knocking stuck bombs out of Bombay doors. <laughs> Never can tell when such things will come in handy. Guess we'll have to have that song rewritten for you three. What? What, what song? song? From now on, we'll be singing, Coming in on a wing and a wing. <laughs> well, yes, sir. There'll still be a lot of praying involved. Redfield for a very fine portrayal. Now here's an important message. Can you qualify to fly in your United States Air Force? There's good news for you young men who have had two or more years of college. Yes, because today the age requirement has been lowered to include you fellows who are just 19. If you can qualify and are between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, you can fly the mighty bombers and speedy jets of today's expanding Air Force. There's an important job to be done. There's an important future for you in Air Force Blue. For full information, visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station or nearest Air Force base, or write to Aviation Cadet Branch, Headquarters, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured William Redfield as Captain Jack Miller. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.